Good evening, I'm Shogun Mohammed, and this is the 11 o'clock news. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received condolences from His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander, and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the President of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince's Court, Sheikh Khalifa bin Adaj Al Khalifa, and Sheikh Salman bin Adaj Al Khalifa on the demise of Sheikh Ahala bin Adaj Al Khalifa. His Majesty also received condolences from senior royal family members. His Majesty hailed the contributions of the deceased in humanitarian and charity fields, praying to Allah the Almighty to rest her soul in eternal peace. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince offered his condolences to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, his sons and the deceased brothers. He also expressed appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for his condolences, wishing him abundant health. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received cables of condolences from the United Arab Emirates President, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, on the demise of Sheikh Ahala bin Taj Al Khalifa, the mother of His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Majesty the King also received cables of condolences from the UAE's Vice President, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, and the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi and Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE's Armed Forces, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa ordered the disbursement of the Eid al Fitr grant to all widows and orphans registered with the Royal Charity Organization. His Majesty tasked his representative for charity work and youth affairs and the chairman of the RCO, His Highness Sheikh Nasr bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to follow up on the disbursement of the royal grant to all the beneficiaries. His Highness Sheikh Nasr congratulated His Majesty on the advent of Eid al-Fitr, praying to Allah the Almighty to perpetuate happiness, joy, welfare and security among all people on this blessed occasion. His Highness extended his deepest gratitude and appreciation to His Majesty the King on the annual gesture, which affirms the King's paternal care for all RCO-sponsored families and his keenness on sharing various national occasions with them, as well as on providing them with different services to guarantee them a decent and stable life. RCO Secretary General Dr. Mustafa Sayyid congratulated His Majesty the King and His Highness Sheikh Nasr on the advent of Eid al-Fitr, hailing His Majesty's constant initiatives emanating from his keenness on philanthropic and humanitarian work and sharing with RCO-sponsored families their happiness on all national occasions. 
His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa ratified and issued law number 24 for the year 2018 to amend the second paragraph of Article 24 of Decree number 28 for the year 1999 concerning the establishment and organization of industrial zones after its approval by the Shura and Representatives Councils. His Majesty the King also ratified and issued Law Number 25 of 2018, amending Article 3 of Law by Decree Number 14 of 2002 on the exercise of political rights. According to the law, the second clause of Article 3 of Decree Law 14 of 2002 on the exercise of political rights will be amended as follows. The following person shall be banned from contesting parliamentary elections as candidates. A person who is convicted of committing a felony even if a special amnesty is granted or they have been rehabilitated. A person who is sentenced to imprisonment for intentional offences for more than six months even if a special amnesty has been granted. Actual leaders and members of political societies which have been dissolved by a final judgment for committing serious violations of the provisions of the constitution of the kingdom or any of its laws. Any person who intentionally harms or disrupts the constitutional or parliamentary process by terminating or leaving the parliamentary work in the Council of Representatives or their membership has been dropped by the same reasons. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa chaired today the weekly cabinet meeting at Ghaibiya Palace. On the occasion of Eid al-Fitr, His Royal Highness extended his sincere congratulations to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa and to the Arab and Islamic worlds, wishing Bahrain and its people continued security, stability and prosperity. The cabinet mourned the demise of the President of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Khalid bin Ali al-Khalifa, and recalled his contributions to the service of his homeland and effort through the positions held in the municipalities or in the field of judicial or Islamic affairs, stressing that he will be remembered by Bahrain's leadership and people with appreciation and respect. The cabinet expressed appreciation for the initiative of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud of Saudi Arabia, to call for a summit in Makkah to support the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan, reflecting Saudi Arabia's continuous quest to support the stability of Arab countries and development of their peoples. The cabinet commended the rapid response to this generous invitation for its sense of responsibility towards Arab solidarity, noting that the important outcome of the summit will constitute support for Jordan. The cabinet commended the Saudi-UAE Coordination Council as an active model of bilateral cooperation between countries and the activation of its ties and mechanisms and its role in supporting the joint GCC action. The cabinet welcomed the outcome of the first meeting of the Saudi-UAE meeting held in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia under the co-chairmanship of the Saudi Crown Prince, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defense, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman Al Saud and Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi and Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan. The Prime Minister followed up the implementation of controls of the sale of the land and real estate in cities and villages, including neighborhoods in Mahara, Galali and Zalyog, and in some villages and other cities to ensure that sales do not affect the demographic composition and the social and historical privacy of these neighborhoods, villages and cities. In this regard, the Cabinet assigned the Survey and Land Registration Bureau in coordination with the concerned authorities to take the necessary measures. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister assigned the Ministry of Housing to study the construction of a housing project in Saar and also directed the Ministry to include the current housing applications of people in Saar in the Hamla Housing Project, Salman City and Mazayan programs. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister directed all ministries of services to be always present in the service of citizens and to respond to their needs.
in line with the announcements of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, the Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa during the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, during which he welcomed hosting the Green Climate Fund in the Kingdom and based on the government's keenness on consolidating the Kingdom's international efforts to protect the environment and support the global efforts aimed at combating climate change and reducing its impact. The cabinet approved the establishment of the Green Climate Fund in the Kingdom, which is one of the most important financing mechanisms in the field of climate change to achieve the objectives of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, which was ratified by the Kingdom of Bahrain in 1994. The cabinet authorized the Minister of Foreign Affairs to sign the final agreements for the establishment of the center. The cabinet approved amending the executive regulations of the traffic law by adding classic as a new classification of vehicles and adding the registration plates to the types of number plates table. The amendment aims to set regulations on the registration of used imported vehicles that have been manufactured for more than five years. The cabinet approved a draft resolution to be issued by the Minister of Interior in this regard. The cabinet also approved a draft resolution to include the registration plates of antique cars as part of the procedures manual for the sale of special and semi-special registration numbers for which all rules and procedures relating to the sale of special registration number plates apply. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister directed to expand the uses of solar energy, increase its reliance on it as a supply of electric energy and adopt alternatives that will make storage of this energy affordable. The cabinet was briefed on the plan made by the Electricity and Water Authority to strengthen the electricity network, rehabilitate the sub-distribution stations and provide 308 mobile generators for use in the event of a power outage. The cabinet approved a new system to allow transit passengers to stay in the kingdom for three days instead of one. Five memorandums of understanding between Bahrain and France were discussed in the fields of education, higher education, agriculture, fisheries, renewable energy, and joint French and Bahraini exports. The cabinet decided to refer all memorandums of understanding to the Ministerial Committee for Legal Affairs. The Council discussed amending the executive regulations of the commercial registration law. The cabinet discussed a draft resolution to regulate the registration and use of the kingdom's domain .bh. The resolution amends the decision issued in 2008 in this regard. The draft resolution presented by the Minister of Transportation and Telecommunication provides more flexibility in registering the domain's name. The Cabinet approved a draft law presented by the Representatives' Council amending the Society's Law. The amendment requires candidates for the membership of Board of Directors of Associations and Clubs to have full political and civil rights. The draft law prohibits people with no political rights from becoming members of societies, clubs or associations administrations. The council decided to refer the draft law th to the legislative authority. The Kingdom of Bahrain welcomes the meeting held in Mecca between the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud of Saudi Arabia, His Majesty King Abdullah II of Jordan, His Highness the Emir of Kuwait, Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabir Al Sabah, and the Vice President and Prime Minister of the United Arab Emirates and ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, to discuss the economic crisis in the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan and ways to end it. The Kingdom affirms that the important results reached will contribute to enhancing stability and supporting the development efforts in Jordan for the good and prosperity of its brotherly people. The Kingdom expresses appreciation for the generous initiative of the custodian of the two holy mosques to hold this important meeting, which reflects his genuine approach to support brothers and his keenness to establish security and peace in all the countries of the region. Bahrain also expresses its sincere appreciation for the steadfast efforts of Saudi Arabia, the UAE and Kuwait, hailing their great contributions in supporting the Arab and Islamic nations.